My name is Owen Davis, and I am a composer, a percussionist, an improviser, a curator, a noise artist, in no particular order. Uh, it, I'm always afraid to like list off an order, actually, because then it gives some sort of preference, but I'm kind of all of those things in this intertwining way. And uh, I live currently in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm heavily involved with a group called Mockrep that I started three years ago in Chicago, Illinois. Perfect. Well, thanks for doing this, Owen. Um, why don't we, before we jump in here, last season for us, you actually wrote us a piece, N6. Would you be willing to talk a little bit about that? I know in your video you made about it, you had talked about how it sort of itself is not a finished process and that it, you know, it will continue evolving. Are you able to just maybe to talk a little bit about N6 and maybe that idea? Yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll talk about N6 in context of all of the other noise pieces that I've been writing. Uh, so the N series or the noise series was a, a long-term, large-scale project that I started back in October of 2015, so just a little under a year ago. And um, it was a way for me to uh, explore and put into practice my interest in noise and around noise. And so each piece, as the series has kind of evolved and played out, each piece deals with noise in a different way. So uh, N1, kind of as you would expect, uh, N1 deals with noise in a very matter-of-fact way, in an almost like uh, Helmut Lachmann music concrete instrumental way, where it's just about the noisy elements of, in this case, the vibraphone. And then from there, the series kind of, series kinds of, uh, it takes a departure and explores different types of noise. So for example, um, composerly noise. So um, noise to me as composer and what composers do. Noise to notation. And all of this kind of developed, developed. And then N6 is actually the last one that has been finished. And this deals with like a noise of uh, time and definitely a noise of like replication and a noise of like different performances and variances in between there. So it was my goal with N6 to create like a kind of fi fixed object, but then try to control uh, the score and its dissem dissemination afterwards in such a way that basically no one else gets the score, they only get the recording as the score. And so in this way, it's a uh, noise to what a score normally is. Cool. Um, really interesting. And that sort of sets up my next question for you. You actually sent me a book to read called Noise in and as Music. And in the introduction, she talks about he, she, there's two authors. I forgot to write Aaron them. Cassidy and Aaron Einbaum, and they both, both are male. <laughs> Perfect. I feel like maybe I should have done that homework. Um, but yeah, so they, they posed two questions to a bunch of composers, and I was going to pose them to you. So the first one is simply, what is noise to you? Yeah, uh, and it's kind of interesting answering that question having read all of these different answers to it. And I think that's a lovely feature of the book is that there's no one noise. There's all these different takes on what noise could be. So, yeah, noise for me is, uh, is potential. Uh, noise for me is like this expression of otherness in sound and then as a sounds potential into music and so it's kind of this thing that is um, constantly being defined and redefined I actually was talking to someone the other day and I realized that I can't really imagine a, a, a post noise situation because all, all of these different movements and practices happen and then they kind of end and then there's the post you know what happens afterwards but noise seems yeah. to be this actually this thing that is uh, eternal in, in some way that uh, each generation will have its own noise. And there's never a situation where noise 
doesn't exist because as soon as you define some sort of like normative practice or conventional way of doing something, the thing that counters that is the noise to that idea. And so um, it's this almost bottomless pit of uh, rich potential to explore for me. And so that's what it is. Awesome. Um, and then the second question is, why do you make it? Yeah, why do I make it? Maybe I answered that in my, my definition of it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just like something... I, I feel as though actually thinking back to when I first got into what we can call new music or experimental music, really what attracted me to it, I'm thinking retrospectively now is this noisy aspect so my introduction into the world of whatever we want to call this i like to call it new music it's a nice term but um my introduction into new music was with accidentally or unknowingly listening to a recording of four minutes and 33 seconds and that's actually a nice symbol of of noise and how it interacts with us so 433, um, you're kind of presented with the situation of there being a piece of music and as soon as there's not or not something that you expect, uh, it becomes this like moment of noise and it reveals that you are the noise, that uh, your reaction to this and you, your uh, desires, your expectations, all of these things interact with the moment of noisiness. So in this way, 433, although silent, is one of the noisiest pieces of the 20th century. And like this is uh, my way into this world. And so I didn't have a name for it back then. I just knew that it was something special and something intriguing. Uh, but now I'm, I'm coming to understand that like noise is this like very rich gateway for me. Very cool. Um, and one thing I guess I want to ask you, since you, you not only compose, you perform a lot, do you, I guess at one point you're creating the noise and when you're interpreting the noise or both at the same time, but do you approach it differently in either of those roles? Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So I guess, uh, I've done two shows now kind of as a noise artist and there's a lot of motivation for me doing that. One of them was that I was working for months and months as a composer interacting with noise and then in a way I kind of felt like a fraud because there's this rich history of noise musicians and this whole practice of like this post-punk uh, performance practice of like basically someone with a, a mixer and electronics of various sorts, um, analog and digital and creating some sort of noise using that. and so. When I say that I performed as a noise artist, that's what I mean, um, creating like this generative synthesis of, of noise. And so um, in those situations, what I didn't expect to happen was that noise or the noise that I was creating um, didn't want to be controlled by me anymore. And in this way, I almost felt as though it like found its own sentience, its own life. And then it was just my job to kind of like step back and like channel this energy into these various streams. And so as a performer, it's allowed me to like interact with sound in a new way because oftentimes as, as a traditional like classical whatever performer, um, we're, we're taught and encouraged to like constantly control the sound and every aspect of it and you're kind of this like this craft person who can like have this total uh, manipulation of sound and then in the situation of making noise and we can think now of noise as resistance uh, this noise doesn't want to be controlled it doesn't want to be shaped and crafted it just wants to kind of live and break apart. And so interacting with it is actually really, really interesting. Yeah, I have to agree. I know you're actually one of the people that got me into noise. You and Nick, actually, were the ones that set me down that way. 
Um, and it, it's that, yeah, when you're, when you're interpreting it, it, you start realizing, like, you can't control it. Which is a very interesting moment because they said, yeah, we're classically trained and we're trained to have absolute control of something where it's not possible. So, yeah, that's really fascinating. Yeah, um, it has been. Actually, one thing I want to talk to you about, it is, and it's, it's, one of the, it's sort of like a, an endless fountain of inspiration as well. Mm-hmm. And I found I'll, I'll apply what I learned doing noise stuff and playing noise music to just my normal music. When I have to go and play something else, it's a new awareness of sound. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you mentioned mock rep, and I know anyone who's listened to our podcast and that have heard about mock rep. Do you want to talk a little bit about mock rep and maybe spin that forward to what y'all did this past summer? Yeah. Uh, so maybe I'll talk about mock rep in its current state. And so, uh, yeah, yeah mock rep in its current state is kind of um, coming out of being a new music ensemble, starting as a new music ensemble, and then evolving into like this new uh, kind of a performance collective. In some in some ways, we're starting to function much more as like a theater troupe or like an artist collective. In some way, we, we opened up the, the hierarchy of the curatorial process in in such a way that everyone has this equal say and then when everyone is given this immense amount of agency and responsibility there's kind of this like new form of um, performance new form of creating and making art together and so mock rep in its current state is kind of this like thing this kind of group of people that is making art together but very much coming out of the new music world and so um we were invited as one of three young ensembles to the 2016 uh, summer courses for new music in darmstadt that happened in late july into early august and we were the only u.s uh, ensemble invited the other two ensembles, Schaffield was from the UK, and then We Spoke was from Switzerland. And each of the three young ensembles were given uh, an opportunity to do a workshop uh, and then also uh, have a showcase concert. And so uh, we did both of those things. Our workshop was in collaboration with the Harvard composer Stephen Takasuki, and the workshop was titled just beyond our instruments is the world which is a very wonderful and beautiful expression of a name and sure. it's it's actually created some conversation around like what it could mean and some people have thrown out uh this idea of like post instrumental music and in a way that's a, a good description of what we may be doing but post instrumental is kind of a weird word to to unpack um but in that workshop we collaborated with eight artists from around the world and we made pieces together over the two-week courses and they uh varied in in ways of collaboration they varied in ways of how much was done beforehand versus during the actual process of creating it and we learned uh, an immense amount about how to interact with artists and we actually use that type that the time as kind of like a, a prototype of how we now are working in our fourth season which is much more collaboratively with artists um, writing proposals for each other asking artists to write proposals to work with us and then thinking about like building relationships with artists over a longer period of time versus just like playing a piece Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, so that w- that was that, and then the showcase concert. We did um, a piece by Jennifer Walsh, uh, whom we got to interact with during Darmstadt. Um, she's kind of a hero of ours in in Makrep. We did her um, Barbie opera in 2015 called Triple X Live New Girls, and that's a great piece of art um check it out if you if you don't know it we did a a piece by a uk-based composer named james saunders 
whose music uh, is kind of a social situation uh, or a political situation. So the piece that we did, uh, a, num- a number of players, in, in our case four, we just had to like remember these patterns. But then in remembering these patterns, James kind of accepts that uh, there's going to be errors made and then there's all these negotiations that happen between all four of us in real time when these negotiations happen. Uh, we did a piece by a German composer named uh, Nela Holker, and uh, this piece deals with uh, kind of the, the body as a performative apparatus, and they like to work a lot with um, ASMR, and it's more as potential uh, for integration into performance and music. Uh, and then we did a piece by our own mock rep member, Zach Moore. And Zach's piece was kind of like this really, really aesthetic, festive critique of Darmstadt. Uh, the, the piece was like this improvised section in the beginning that sounded like a new music piece, but it was improvised. And then he was conducting it in this very like exaggerative way. <laughs> and then it breaks into like this, like rock and roll section and like Zach takes off his shirt. And then everyone is screaming, uh, in the end in kind of segmented parts, they, they scream, uh, why that and not this. That meaning, why do we have to do this type of music and why is uh, that, or why do we have to do that type of music and why isn't this, meaning like rock and roll, et cetera, uh, welcome in, in Darmstadt. So I think we, we had a really nice time in Darmstadt, um, although we were very, very busy. Uh, we had like six to seven hours of rehearsal a day. And then on top of that, there was like sometimes a dozen concerts going on a day with lectures in between. So we went to as much as we could, but we had to miss uh, many, many concerts that we would have loved to go to. Uh, But overall, it was like this oversaturated sensory overload experience of, of new music and all of these wonderful facets of new music. Very cool. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I remember watching all your guys' Facebook feeds during it, and it was like, ah, I wish I could have been there. Just seeing from the outside, it looks so exciting. Um, so I guess uh, one, one or two more questions for you. Um, so you're in Arizona right now, and you have a series that you help curate, uh, the Interference Series. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, so what that is all about? Yeah, yeah. And so for the first season, I... Um was using language of of we because I tried to like and wanted to assemble helpers to partners to curate this with me um, but in the end I definitely am the sole curator <laughs> and so I don't help do it I, I do it and uh, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work uh, curating experimental or avant-garde or whatever you want to call it, um, this other type of performance, art, uh, new music, noise music, improvised music uh, in Flagstaff, Arizona, which um, has a, it has a music scene. It's definitely heavy on the, the folk side of things. There's a lot of bluegrass. There's like a Celtic group. All the things that you would imagine a small mountain town having in the middle of Arizona. Yes. Um, but there is a university, which is where I'm sitting right now, uh, using their internet. And I'm tapping into all of the resources of, of students in their undergrad and master's programs and kind to trying to kind of intervene with them and say, hey, have you heard of this composer? Or, hey, have you done free improvisation before? And kind of like interrupting their studies and saying, hey, uh, why don't you come out to this place off campus and improvise with me? Or improvise with this other person who has never improvised before. And so it's a lot of um, 
it's a lot of like curation of things. There's definitely people coming from from out of town, from uh, the valley, which is Phoenix, Tucson, the larger cities. There's people coming through Arizona on tour, etc. But the majority of of the artists that I present are local artists, and then from that, uh, I try to uh, always meet with them, ask them, you know, why are you making art in the world in 2016, and uh, be very like kind of critical of of what they're doing in a hopefully healthy way, and encouraging them to experiment and to take risks and creating a space for failure and learning from that failure. And so, uh, yeah, over the past year we did, uh, I did 30 concerts over like, uh, nine or 10 months. And, uh, the second season is just about to start back up in October. Cool. All right. I got, I have one more for you. Do you have any projects coming up you're working on that you want to talk about, maybe? Yeah, let's see, upcoming projects. Well, uh, I'm still in the middle of the end series. Uh, So it ended with Time Point, with N6, and N7, 8, and 9 are all kind of drafted out, very in their early conceptual stages. But I just got an opportunity to collaborate with a, a new local choir of just community members. And I'm actually going to be writing N10, which I think is going to be the final piece in the Noise series uh, with them. And so over the next like six, seven months, I'm going to be going into the rehearsals, uh, interacting with them, improvising with them, and hopefully making a piece that is uh, somewhat collaborative and uh, I actually the other day last week I got to do a lecture on noise in the middle of their rehearsal and it was kind of a profound moment because I walked in and it's in a church it's in like this local federated church and it's beautiful and I walk in and they're rehearsing this pop tune and uh, this I'm not trying to be ageist at all, but like there's a lot of older people in the choir, and so I'm sitting there waiting for them to like take a break, and then in the middle, literally in the middle of their rehearsal, they're like taking a break to listen to me talk about noise, and so I was actually very afraid <laughs> to do this, and I I was thinking in my head, everyone's going to hate it, like what are they going to think of this? They're going to think I'm full of crap or something. I don't know. But I gave my lecture and I had all these like samples of noise music in between both my own noise pieces and uh, Mersbo and other noise artists. And actually after I ended, there was the kind of question and answer section afterwards. They were amazingly receptive to this idea of noise and this this one woman actually talked about how she works with uh, children with autism and she actually talks about noise with with her children and, and says that noise is something that you actually can tune into in life and you should feel free to make your own noise uh, if you want to and every everybody kind of gave their own anecdotal relationships to noise and it seemed like a, actually a really productive and healthy interaction with a bunch of people who I thought were not going to be into noise at all. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I'm super excited to, to work with them and uh, learn a bunch and have them try some new things out. And yeah, so that's maybe one project that I'm excited about. Very cool. Yeah, it's always interesting when... I know within Calgary here, like the new music scene is is growing and the noise scene is very existent in bars, but within the world of like classically trained musicians doing it, it, it did not exist. And like last season, I programmed Ablinger and I was like, how is this going to go over? And we actually had two pieces by Ablinger on our season and like incredibly receptive. Um, it's always interesting sort of when you just let people figure it out. <laughs> That at least I'm seeing it here too, where, you know, I bet if we 
did more of a, like a traditional approach to how to present the piece, sort of like borrowing from the classical canon, people would have hated it. But that we just sort of put it in the world and people figured it out. There was really interesting response. You may enjoy saying anecdote. There's in we did black series and you know every pause for about the first 14 minutes there was a guy at the front of the stage who screamed every single one, and I was thinking I'm like he'll he's gonna give up and he just kept going and like about like 80 percent of the work yeah he was right there in every single one. Yeah. Wait, so let me get, let me get this straight. So y'all were playing those those like walls of sound in Black Series. So like, and then and this guy went like, ah, yeah, every single one. That's so amazing. Filled them. Yeah, and it's you know we played it in a a bar that was we were with a prog rock band that night, and so the culture we were in, interacting with was so different, and just that was his like natural reaction to it and i was like i couldn't be happy this is awesome <laughs> yeah like you do you that's so amazing <laughs> yeah and first couple times we're like what is going on but then we're like yeah let's go with this <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um that's great and i guess i'm gonna i'm gonna throw one more question at you um this one will be the the bonus one for people um, do you want to talk, you've talked about free improv a bunch and like Calgary has a very live jazz scene. So people here are used to more traditional improv. Can you talk really quickly, like sort of about free improv since that doesn't really happen here? I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. If you'd like access to the complete interview, head on over to www.patreon.com slash timepoint, and you can sign up there. There's also a link below. With a small donation of $5 a month, you'll get access to the extended interviews, as well as a lot of other digital content. So please head on over and join us. 